In this video, I want to share a very simple exercise that you can do to actually start developing your sense of direction and just have a way of knowing where you are in the forest, being able to know where you've come from, where you're going to, and to have all that understanding of the woods, the forest that you're in, to have it very clearly stored up in your mind. If you've been following the videos that I make for any amount of time here, um, you know that I talk a lot about developing the senses and uh, developing our ability to see, to hear, to feel, to smell, and generally just perceive our environment, um, especially in the context of nature. Uh, you know, I really see that there's just so much to the biology of humans and how we evolved in nature, we evolved alongside nature, and our brains and our nervous systems are really designed to work in a natural environment where we're out doing, you know, sort of paleolithic activities like hunting and gathering and looking at trees, looking at listening to birds, all these kinds of things, that this is what our sensory system is designed for. And it's very common for people to talk about sense of direction in the modern world. Very often I'll be out in the forest with people and um, especially if they're like, if they don't have a ton of experience being out on the land, um, they will very often say, oh, I just have, I have a really poor sense of direction. And that is a reflection both of where we are in terms of our modern society um, and just how disconnected we've become from nature. And it's also a reflection of how we're using our brains and how we're using our nervous system in a, in a way that's very different from how we did not really that long ago. And so a lot of people kind of have this sense that, you know, sense of direction is something that you're born with. You know, some people have it and some people don't. And w what I want to show you is that you actually can cultivate this as a skill. You, you have a sense of direction and to think of it as a sense. As much as you have your sense of sight and your sense of hearing and your sense of smell and all these different senses, you also have a sense of direction and we can cultivate this and um, it really can dramatically impact your level of appreciation and enjoyment when you get out into the woods. It can give you a sense of confidence and security and knowing that you're not going to get lost. Uh, a lot of people want to connect with nature and get deeper out into, you know, sort of more wilderness type environment, but sometimes people are scared because they don't feel confident in their own ability to stay safe and not get lost when they're out there. And so doing a little bit of practice, this exercise that I'm going to share with you today will really help with this and it'll give you the confidence to be able to go out and, um, you know, once you've practiced and you've developed your sense of direction, you will, you will feel a lot more at home in the wilderness. So I want to just give you a little bit of the context so you can see the forest that I'm doing this in and the type of place that you can look for. Um, the exercise that I'm going to share with you, you don't need like a huge amount of space, but um, you do need to get somewhere where you can sort of go off trail and, um, and have, you know, as far as you can see in every direction be just sort of, you know, trees. And I've chosen as our starting point this very distinctive um, it's actually the largest tree in this whole forest. Uh, this is an oak tree and um, it's got thick trunks and we're gonna sort of use this as a navigational anchor um, because it's very visible. You can see it from around the forest. If at any point we do get lost, you can just look for this tree and um, that will take us back to our starting point. Um, the trail is over there um, so I know, I know it's there, but we're just gonna, we're gonna do this exercise um, looking out this way, which is sort of away from the trail. So there's lots of different ways to think about sense of direction, and we're certainly not going to cover all of them today. Um, but the one that I really want to talk about, um, that's really, I think, it's like a low-hanging fruit, that this is just, it's so simple. Um, it really just comes down to looking at your surroundings consciously because most of the time when people get out into the woods um, especially if they're in like a 
you know, a hiker's mindset. Um, a lot of times they're sort of like staring at the ground just a few feet in front of them um, and not really taking the time to look at trees um, as individuals. And you know, you might be in a forest that's filled with all kinds of oak trees. So you're surrounded by oak trees. You might think that all the trees look the same, but if you're really engaging your sense of sight, um, there are actually differences that we can start to, to tune into. And so for the starting point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick one distinct feature of this landscape to sort of make our, our home base. And so you wanna get into the woods, find a spot. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can just be a park, um, but you do wanna get off a trail um, and have, you know, the confusion of lots of different trees, lots of different plants obscuring your view and all that kind of stuff. So find a place like that and then you're gonna pick one thing. I'm gonna pick this oak tree that's behind us right here. Um, it's got multiple trunks. It's got a very distinctive look to it. Um, and then what you're gonna do is once you pick that one element, it can be a rock. I've used like big boulders before when I've been in places that have big boulders. Um, it can be a particular tree that has a little bit of a distinguishing feature to it. Uh, it can be, you know, just anything at all that stands out to you as like, okay, this is unique enough that I can look at it and I can see it as something individual. So what we're going to do is we're going to just walk out a little bit so I can give you a view of this and we're going to turn around and I'll show you, we're just going to look at it. All we're going to do is look at it. So here you go, you can see um, this big oak tree out in front of me. It really is a, a really nice tree. Um, I've been through this forest a bunch and um, I don't think there's any trees that are larger than this. It's, uh, it's almost like this one was left when this area was last cut. It, this oak tree was left as like a seed tree and um, oftentimes they'll do that when they're cutting an area if it's been um, disturbed by people. If you, if you are doing this in a place that's disturbed by people, which is pretty likely, um, you'll find these like occasionally you'll come across like this one tree that's just way bigger than everything else. And uh, sometimes this is a seed tree and um, that might be what this is right here. But uh, you know, all, all you do when you pick your starting point, your home base for navigation and developing your sense of direction is to just look at it. So, you know, it's got these two main trunks. It's got some secondary trunks coming out and um, it's pretty distinctive. Uh, you know, it's got this green sort of moss around the base. I can look at this tree and I can see it not just as an oak tree, but I can see it as an individual. And um, so you can, you can do this, it, it, you know, it really only takes, um, you know, 30 seconds of conscious looking. And that's really the key is if, if you have never really looked at trees consciously and, and connected with them as an individual, um, you know, you might even, if you really want to milk this and you really want to get the, get the, the deepest understanding of your starting point, um, we can come over here and we can, you know, we can look at it really closely. We can look at the bark, we can, uh, we can look down at the moss and, you know, even see how, you know, as we get closer, there's signs of, of, uh, animals, um, leaving little wood chips and, uh, from, you know, seeds that they're pulling apart and uh, th there's a whole ecosystem in this one tree. Different things to explore and so you can you can spend as much time as you want um, just getting to know the tree that you're starting from and um, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna step away and we're gonna we're just gonna step um, you know, maybe like, maybe like 10 or 20 feet in that direction. And, uh, you know, just pick the direction that you want to go. Right now, I'm not, we're not really worried in this case about whether we're going north, south, east, west. That's, that's a different aspect of your sense of direction. 
Um, right now we're just we're just focusing on how to keep you from getting lost so that if you have a starting point and you walk into the woods in some random direction can you make sure that you're able to get back to your starting point okay so we've we've come a little bit of distance and we're keeping it really easy right now um, in general the less distance that you go each time um, the you know the easier it's going to be and so as you get more skilled at this you can walk further um, between points but what we're going to do is after you've walked a little ways away from your starting point um, you're going to turn around and look at it from this new position okay so we we can see our home base at the oak tree from a further distance and and say okay yeah I know exactly where I am I'm close to that that tree at the starting point and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna swing back and look in the direction that we want to go and as we look out here we're gonna pick something distinctive out in front something that we can see out in the distance that stands out as unique and in this case I'm seeing that there's like this clump of of uh, trees all kind of growing really closely together in this one little section and it just it really stands out to me it's just really obvious it looks like there's actually a down tree that kind of points to it a little bit too um, so let's just let's walk over to that next point and then we're gonna um, we're gonna make that our next home base so you know we're starting at the oak tree and we're moving to the um, the the clump of trees okay so here we are at the new waypoint on our journey here this is the down tree that was pointing towards the clump that's right behind me and um, now that we're close to it we can see it a lot better and so the next thing that we're going to do is when you get to that next point you're going to once again look at it consciously just take like a minute or two minutes or three minutes and just study it just really notice what's unique about it count the trees get close to them back up a little bit Find something that, that just really stands out to you and looks really distinctive. We can do things like count the number of trees. Um, we can notice how there's this, uh, this dead standing one that's kind of rotting away. Make sure that you look, look up. We can see that there are maple trees here and we can kind of get in there and try to see, you know, are they all maple trees or is it a, is it a mixture of things? we can see where they connect into the ground like this is actually one tree right here that's got multiple trunks coming up and it was obviously cut at some point in its history and then this is the regrowth from that and then a similar sort of thing over here so it's one tree and two trees growing in a in a in clumps and it just sort of creates this um this kind of almost extra bit of thickness you know if we look out of this area um, it's a lot more sparse in the surrounding zones. But the other thing that you really want to do here is you want to turn back and you want to look and if you see right through there that is our oak tree and it's you know it's a little bit harder to see at this point if we look up we can now see the the canopy of that tree a lot better now and um, it's really important it's really important that when you're doing this exercise the the key thing that makes this work is that you take the time to look behind you it's that moment when you look behind you look back at that oak tree and see what it looks like from a distance because um, it's this sort of strange trick in the brain that things look different when you're farther away from them than they do when you're close up to them and so you might be able to recognize that oak tree um, up close but if you can't recognize it when you're standing you know a hundred feet away or whatever distance I am right now um, that is going to 
have a dramatic effect on your sense of direction because it's if you can't see the things from both sides and from many different distances and recognize them as the same tree that is going to totally mess up your sense of direction it's going to be really easy to get yourself turned around uh, you're not going to know where you are and it's is just a matter of looking consciously and you know you want to look consciously from many different distances many different perspectives and if all you do when you're out in the woods is every once in a while look behind you uh, you know because most people we never do that you know if you're out hiking in the woods you look in front of you maybe a little bit off to the sides but how often do you just stop and turn around and say where did I come from and if you do that and you just really it's like in a uh, a previous video I made, um, I shared some visual exercises for cultivating your visual sense. And there was one exercise where you look at something and then you close your eyes and you imagine it and you see how clear the image in your mind is. And then you open your eyes and you look at it again and you notice how much more clearly you can see it the second time. And you do this over and over again. It gets the images burnt into your mind. And that's what you want to do with your sense of direction as you're anchoring on these waypoints and seeing where you're going in the woods. Um, you want to get these points burned into your memory. So let's keep going. Let's do a few more waypoints and we'll move uh, through it a little bit quicker. I think it's so simple, like I'm sure you're getting it. I want to make sure that you really, uh, I explain the different components of this so you can get the most from the exercise. So what I'm going to do is come around the other side of this clump our second point here and as we get to this side um we can see actually a lot more clearly that the uh, that down tree actually cuts right through one of the clumps and um so we take the time to look at our second point and we can even try to look through see if we can spot the oak tree uh, I can't really spot the oak tree. I, I think it's, you know, it's thick enough at this point. You know, maybe I can, I can see some of its branches, but you wouldn't really be able to um, identify it as such. And so um, we need to look at this clump and if we turn back out. I wanna go out in, in sort of this direction and I see way over there, there's a little pine tree, and um, let's make that pine tree our next point. And along the way, you know, every every 10 steps or so, I'm stopping to look behind and look at that, that last waypoint um, to just make sure that I'm not getting turned around, I'm not getting confused, and, um, you know, we can still see this, uh, this downed log that cuts right through is actually kind of a, a nice distinctive feature. Um, but we're gonna take this time to engage our eyes, our visual sense consciously and make that mental image of where we've been so that when we wanna come back, we can easily get here. Okay, so here we are at the little pine and uh, this is not necessarily the greatest waypoint to choose because it's a little bit short. Um, you can't see it from super long distances, but one of the things that's kind of standing out to me with this one is that there's this this dead standing tree right beside it too that's right about the same height so when you're first starting out with this you want to choose things in the landscape that are as distinct as possible you know a really weird tree a really big tree you know a rock that has just a, a, a you know a, a distinctive shape so, something try to find things that stand out to you um, as much as possible, but the the more you practice this your brain gets better at storing the images and looking at things and finding distinctiveness in all the different trees that are around you and you can eventually get to the point where you can be in like a, a monoculture spruce forest where every tree is the same age the same size you know pretty much it's like walking through um, like just copies of the same tree over and over again you can find distinctive things about those trees to say oh yeah that's that tree that i was touching just two minutes ago and you start to get more and more subtlety in terms of what you can remember and what you're able to see and so from here we can look back 
and I don't know how well this is going to show on the camera, but the way that I am identifying that clump right now is by this down tree right here, and it goes right through, and the clump is actually right here that we were at. So if you find that you ever turn around and you're like, whoa, where is my previous waypoint? Um, I don't see it there. That might be a sign that you're taking too many steps before turning around. You can make your waypoints closer together if, um, it, you know, if you're finding it challenging. And then um, as you get better, you can you make your waypoints further and further apart. Uh, but you always want to be able to see the previous point from where you are now. So from here, we're looking at our little pine next to the dead standing tree. And let's do one more just so I can show you this whole process and uh, you, you know you can practice with as many waypoints as you want I'm just sort of doing a quick version here and there's there's a road over there so I want to kind of change direction this technique can be used to help you walk in a straight line if you want to you can just line up your waypoints so that and make them a little bit closer together than what I'm doing here so that you can see the far waypoint and the middle waypoint and my current waypoint all line up in a straight line and um, just do that succession, su successively as you move through the forest. Uh, you can use this technique to walk in a, in a perfectly straight line through the forest, which is very difficult for a lot of people to do. Um, but what I actually want to do here, because I'm not, I'm not going in a straight line, I'm just remembering points and going from point to point. So um, I actually want to go off in this direction. And I think what I'm going to do is there's, there's a bigger pine tree down there that looks really appealing to me. And um, I can see there's like some open space at the bottom. And uh, it's of all the pines in this area, of which there are some, um, they're, they're all, that's the biggest one in this whole area so let's go check that out we'll make that our final point and then we'll we'll trace them backwards and you'll get to see how the process works backwards so here we go we're getting close to our final waypoint this pine tree here and um you know i always like to look up try to see the top of it uh look down look at adjacent trees too because that can add distinctiveness to it there's this other deciduous tree that's kind of curved in and uh you know, it just, when you look at the two together, um, it makes it even more distinctive. And I actually didn't realize this, but there's there's actually a trail right there, um, a human trail. And so um, you discover interesting things from doing this kind of stuff and you uh, get to know your forest a lot better. You get to know the place that you're living in. So our final waypoint, the pine tree is right there. And then we swing around and right there, that's the previous pine that we were at. And I know it's that one because it's got this dead standing tree right next to it. That's right about the same height. It's a little tricky to see, but if you ever get um, if you ever get turned around or or miss, you know what your previous waypoint was, you get away from it. This is one of the great things about this whole process is it it will give you immediate feedback about when you are seeing the landscape clearly, when you're looking at the trees clearly, and when you're not looking at them clearly. Because sometimes you might turn around and say, "Okay, I'm going to look back at my previous point." You turn around and where is it? It's gone. Like you just don't see it. And so that tells you that you're going a bit too fast. You're not turning around enough. And um, you maybe need to just kind of backtrack a little bit and find your previous waypoint before you move on. So here we are at our final waypoint with the large pine tree, potentially the largest pine tree in this area at least it's the largest one that I've seen here and all we're gonna do now to finish up this exercise is we're gonna retrace our steps in reverse and make sure that we can get back to all the same waypoints that we visited on the way here so uh, we've got large pine we're gonna go to the small pine we're gonna look for that 
uh, down tree that points to the clump. We're going to get to the clump of maples and then from the maples we're going to go to our home base oak and um, then you know that'll take us through this um, exercise for developing your sense of direction. So here we are back at our little white pine with our dead standing tree. I'm looking through I see the down uh, log pointing towards the clump. Here we are back at the clump standing under the cover of these maples and the uh, the downed log that cuts right through them looking towards our home base oak. And here we are back at the oak tree uh, to finish it all off. And so the most important thing if you want to develop your sense of direction is to get out there and practice. It's not something that you can really do without getting into the field, getting into the forest and putting your eyes to the test and um, just, you know, the key is just to start simple, keep your waypoints close together, um, go slow, uh, look behind you very frequently, make sure you always know exactly where you are in relationship to your other waypoints, and then as you get more and more skilled, you can stretch them out, um, challenge yourself a little bit more, go into more monotonous environments, and test your skills in that place too. You can eventually start to cue in on things like topography so if there are particular uh, if there's like a slope to the landscape with a high point at a peak that can become a waypoint that is much easier to see from very long distances so you can start to you can start to train in on more and more subtle things and it's really i look at this as like like brain training or like training for your senses it's almost like if you were going through life colorblind and then you, through practice, were developing your ability to see color. The more that you do this with your sense of direction, your sense of direction will go through a transformation of awareness where you start to have perceptual shifts and you, you literally start to see the forest more clearly. You literally start to experience your place in the forest from a more grounded and confident position because you know where you are you know how to get where you want to go, you know where you've been. As you practice this more and more, you will start to develop names for different parts of the landscape, like this oak right here. I will never forget this oak, and anytime I want to come back here, I can find this oak. Same thing for the other waypoints here, especially that other pine by that other trail. If I want to get back to that pine at some point, I can very easily do that. And this is what um, I often call navigational fluency. It's kind of like learning a language. It's, you know, a language of nature where you're, at first you have to practice, you have to look really hard, you have to sort of really get yourself to stop and be conscious and turn around, look from all different directions and, um, you know, really make sure that you're, you're using your senses and not getting, getting wrapped up in, um, in where you're trying to get. But then as you do it more and more, you start to develop this fluency of your sense of direction where it just starts to kind of happen without even thinking about it. And you become more and more natural at being able to go into any forest and walk in as far as you want and then when it's time to leave you can just walk out and you will have the sensory awareness to be able to keep yourself from getting lost and that will also translate into feeling a lot more confident about yourself in the woods, being able to enjoy the experience without having to worry about, you know, am I getting lost? Where am I? Um, am I safe here? And uh, you can just, it really, for me, developing my fluency of sense of direction, uh, it made a big difference to how much I was able to just appreciate being out in the woods for a day and have much better experiences, not have to worry about um, if I'm gonna be able to find my way back. And so um, it gave me the freedom to explore as far and wide as I want. And um, it'll do the same for you too. So get out there and practice. Let me know what questions you have and I will see you in the next video.